Hey everyone, I'm Lee Arkinall, and today we're going to take a deep dive into a financially motivated group that is Indrik Spider, aka Evil Corp, and how focusing on behaviors gives us an advantage over focusing on indicators of compromise or IOCs. We're going to explore some of the group's past behaviors and how Cyborg can help improve your current hunting capabilities. Let's go. According to the Miter Attack Matrix, the Indrik Spider or Evil Corp is a Russian based APT is given credit for starting the Drydex banking trojan. If we hop over, we can see that it has infected computers in hundreds of banks and financial institutions in over 40 countries, leading to more than $100 million in theft. And I'm sure that's just what has been reported. So why are we focusing on behaviors instead of indicators of compromise? Well, let me show you real quick. If we take a look at historical hashes that are associated with Drydex, and we're going to use Malpedia in the first version, we can see for all the way back from 2015, we have a ton of indicators of compromise. And if we hop over to Malware Bazaar, same idea. All these hashes are associated with Drydex. I don't know how Agent Tesla popped in there, but here we go. We have all of these indicators of compromise. Now, these are just a point-in-time indicator that something malicious is happening in your environment. The way it works is normally companies will update their antivirus with the new known bad hashes or Microsoft or other threat intel organizations will push this out and say, here's some intel, here's some hashes, go search for it. But what you end up doing is more of a indicator of compromise scan or search instead of really looking for behaviors associated with the behavior. Now this leads to a like a binary outcome. So it's either if you're searching on a hard coded hash, it's either gonna be yes, it exists in my environment, or no, it does not. So how can we get a more mature posture when it comes to preparing ourselves and defending from these threats? Well, let's focus on the behaviors of Indrik Spider. Now these behaviors are captured by the Meyer Tech Matrix really well and they fall under techniques. So these are the techniques that are used by Indrik Spider. We see PowerShell, JavaScript, Windows Command Shell. And you may think that these are just tools, but really what they're capturing are the commands that they're using. And not only the commands, but the intent of the commands. And that's where it really, really separates itself from indicators of compromise, where Adversaries can have control of the hash that is associated with their malware by changing the code over and over and over. What they don't have control of is the parameters and the commands that they need to issue to, first of all, execute these techniques and ultimately reach their goal. But two, those are the behaviors that, are, that can be seen. Those are the things that exist in an infrastructure already and that the adversary can leverage but not create. Now, that may confuse you, but let's take a look at an example of a behavior. So if we come down to enterprise T1070.001, indicator removal, clear windows event logs. If we hop over to our new tab, we see that these commands can be thrown to clear the event logs. Why is this important? If you see this command and it's not associated with a change, it may mean that someone's trying to hide their tracks. Now, what does this mean and where does Cyborg come into the, to play? Well, we take all of this type of information and this intel and we authorizationalize it to, uh, in a way that you can use it in whatever tool, SIM, or EDR that you're using to your advantage. So let me show you. So if we come over to the Cyborg Hunter platform, our wonderful content developers have created a hunt package titled Windows Event Utility. I'm not going to try and say that word cleared log. And if you scroll past the tools that we support, what we get is our query logic. This is the bare bones of the query that we're looking for. This is capturing what we like to call the field value relationship. This is almost like a static alerts and detections. These are the conditions that need to be met for this hunt to be successful. So if we focus on the process path field, we can see that we're focusing on Windows Event Utility living in both the System32 or SysWow64 directory. We're also adding in 
the values of CL, clear log, SL, or set log, and we're looking for those in the command line argument field. So by adding or pairing these conditions together, saying process and command line, so we're looking for these two selections to exist, we can now say that we found this activity in our environment. Now, what we can't do is tell you if that's anomalous or not. That's up to your threat hunters, that's up to your instant responders to understand your unique environment. But now that we've given the query logic table, when we've given you the conditions, how does that make it easy for you? Well, if you have a tool we support, let's use Splunk in this example, we drop down and you see that we have the queries already created. Now, I'm gonna use the Sysmon log source simply because that's in our environment and I really enjoy Sysmon altogether. But if you look at the, the different versions that exist based on different log sources, you can see that all the query logic stands and is still looking for the same thing. So if we jump over to our Splunk instance, we see that we already have the query running and we'll zoom in a little bit. And now what we can see is that we have activity. Not only do we see CL, so the clear log is being active, but the SL. Now, I always like to recommend that the first step you take is verify that the logic is sound and that the values are in the correct fields. So if we come over to process path, we see system32 or syswow64 with Windows event utility. And then we see command line arguments being CL, SL, set log, or clear log. And you can see that there's two different versions here. So we see set log and then clear log. So this logic checks out. But this isn't this doesn't mean that this is completely malicious. Once again, the ball's in your court, and the next steps are that need to be done is for your hunters and your instant responders to take this information, verify that it is that it might coincide or correlate with the change that's going on in your environment, if this was planned, or is this completely malicious or suspicious and something's going on? Now you can do that by pivoting off of different fields like process path, like what was the process that uh, spawned all this activity? Or you could take a look at different uh, process IDs and, and so on. However you take this investigation is up to you. And I could sit here and list thousands of ways. Um, but once again, this is how Cyborg helps you get started and get your hunt going simply by focusing on all these different types of behaviors that you can find in the Hunter platform. Well, thank you very much for spending a couple of minutes with us to learn how threat hunting really increases uh, or improves your security posture and how the Cyber Security Hunter platform can really get your threat hunting processes improved or initialized. So do you want to start threat hunting? Come with us. I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, happy hunting.